I lucky again. <laughs> That's Fabian Tree uh, gave two talks. I don't know if you heard, but it's uh, giving two talks. And this time I couldn't escape. But anyhow. Yeah. Um, today's talk is uh, called The Buddha and the Mind. And it came out because I've been reading uh, the uh, book by Bodhidharma, the uh, Bloodstream Ceremony book. And it just uh, arose a lot of questions and, and, and uh, realizations. And it just put me to think how it is that mind, you know, you probably heard the phrase mind is, mind is everything, everything is mind. And, and in that same concept, I just realized how much uh, of our reality is set up by the mind. It's, it's just, it determines everything. It's, it's, it just uh, uh, basically directs our lives. And, and our mind, the way we think with our mind is, it is determined by our perceptions, both physical and emotional, and, and they are determined uh, our perceptions are physical, emotional, then our own opinions, our history, how we have been formed, how society, friends, uh, family, and friend, uh, just, I guess your whole environment, even your physical uh, reality determines how you think. So the body uh, uh, is just a means to help us perceive reality. For instance, when uh, it rains, you could say, well, you, you get wet because it's raining, and you might think, oh, I'm gonna get sick. But at the same time, you might think, oh, wow, it's raining, I'm gonna get wet. So, physical reality, our perception, our physical perceptions determine our reality. And the same thing with the uh, uh, smell. Uh, uh, eyesight, you know, we many times we see something and we could swear that we saw something. You're like, I swear I saw this, but it wasn't. You know, the, the famous story about the, you know, with the monk that sees a, a think it's a snake at night, but then the next morning he realizes it's just a piece of rope. So that's that's how how I see uh, the body is just a, it's just the means to help us find our way through this physical reality. It's just a, a, a way to position ourselves in the equation, the uh, time uh, uh, physical presence here. You know how uh, time and space are related. So the physical body I realized that, that it's just a, a way for us to, to measure where we are. And, and the moment that, that and, and I, I compared it to the, the physical movement to the movement of the mind. When you are in a place and you're relaxed, you're just enjoying the moment. It's just there, you're just there. But the moment you get up and try to get somewhere, you're already doing a physical activity and, and more likely your mind is going to go on to the act of getting up and going to where you're going. So it's the same thing with the mind. When, when we are calm in the moment and we get out of there, we are not in the moment, we are not here, we are not now. In the now, we start suffering. We start perceiving with that physical reality. The mind, the body uh, perceives, might be, you feel tired, then, therefore your mind reacts. And then all your stories kick in and, and you start making up a story. Oh, I wanna, I'm, I'm feeling tired. Oh, probably I'm going to be sleeping next. And then you, you go with the whole story. Okay, what am I going to do about it? And, and then you start forming, you know, coming up with the story. So that's, that's what I realized that the body, it has a lot. I would say, you know, uh, I don't know what percentage, but to me, just like, I understood the, uh, the, 
the relationship that when you hear the body mind relationship, how it is one, how one determines the other, how the physical reality puts you in a state of mind, and then your state of mind puts you in in a, in a state of uh, of, of physical. Uh, awareness, you know, like if you feel uh, depressed, of course you're going to start feeling tired. And then backwards, you feel tired physically, and then you feel uh, 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 depressed. So the relationship body-mind, it, 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 seemed, it, seemed, it seems so subtle that we really don't pay attention. Unfortunately, uh, everything affects it. For instance, I'm, I'm amazed when I open a look at news on the internet and I see how much of the news are related to just so trivial stuff like you know the Kardashians and Kim Kardashian broke her fingernail <laughs> <laughs> and and you know and and the, the thing is that we tend to pay attention to all those news all those things that happen in the world and therefore if you're not well aware it could determine your day how you perceive how how that moment is going. You know, you might have gotten up early in the morning, feeling fine, and then you read the news and you're like, wow. Well, maybe things are not that great. And then we start taking into account that perception that we have of physical reality. We start actually actually forming an opinion, which in the end might, if we keep having that opinion over and over and over, it's going to become part of us. And then we become uh, dependent on how we perceive reality. So my day is going to go according to how I see things. Therefore, physical reality is determining a lot of what we what we think, what we uh, uh, what we do, how we act. And it's not to say that the physical body is not important, because you know you could say, oh well, you know we're going to die anyway. Yeah, of course, we're going to die. But it is important to it to just be aware of the body in the sense and take take care of it. And it's not because you don't want to suffer or that you want to look good or you want to be healthy. Those are reasons. To me, the only reason is that the only is the only body we have. Eventually, we're gonna die, no matter what. I mean, that's. So we're gonna get sick and we're gonna die, but the body is the only one we have, and and, and I think if there's a reason you want you want to find a reason to be in good health, is to be able to serve others, to be able to to do some good use of this body, do something with it, like okay, because we you, most of us we tend to go and do what we like, but what do you do when? you go beyond that point in which you realize that you're part of the everything that you are the other and the other is you and that your physical reality depends on you and how you what you do about what's going on so the body is important in that sense that we can actually be able to help and do give some good use to this body like I say, you, can, you might have your personal reasons. I mean, I, there are things that I love to do, but at the same time, I realize that that when I want too many things to do for myself, it's just building up because then you want to do this, then you want to do that, then you want to do that. So the best way for me to just forget a little bit about the body is like lose, lose in 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 the. Uh, in the world, just lose myself in the world, lose myself in life, just give this body to life. Do something about it, do something about life, do something about what's going on out there. And it might not be a whole lot that we want to go and change the world tomorrow, but it's something you can do, you know, just, just first of all, helping yourself. You know, you, you real, realize that, I realize that sometimes it's like, wow, I've been putting uh, things things that I have to do, I've been, you know, procrastinating and saying, oh, I'll get to them tomorrow, but those are things that need to be done. 
And, 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 and when you want to do something about reality, well, it's about start with ourselves. Do something for ourselves. What is it that we need to do for ourselves so we can be in good shape, both mentally and physically, to go do something for others? Because if you just uh, uh, lose yourself and, and, and go do something for someone else to the point in which you don't even take care of your own body, you don't feed yourself, you don't exercise, you don't do the correct things for your body, what's the point? If, if, if there's a reason for us to be in, in good shape, it's so we can help ourselves and help others. That's the reason for me to just be, be fit, be, be able to help. So, the physical reality it gets determined by, by uh, your mind, your emotions, and the fact that it, we're perceiving all the time doesn't let us see past beyond this physical reality. So how it is that, that we're able to see this physical reality, but we're not able to go past that physical reality that we're perceiving? It's because precisely we get blocked by our own thoughts. And, and the, 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 what I find curious about is that the mind, when you identify the mind with the body, it's going to keep thinking the same things that you've been thinking your whole life over and over. Therefore, the phrase, uh, you know, uh, the definition of insanity is doing the same things over and over again. I think that's what happens. Your body gets gets identified with, I mean, your mind gets uh, identified with the body, and therefore, the ego, and you keep wanting to resolve things through your reasoning. And you want to find an either a white or black solution to a problem. And therefore you keep, you know, uh, bouncing against the same problems over and over and over. So, when mind is attached or coming from spirit, your body actually gets your ego gets bypassed by your connection, the mind with the spirit. So the spirit can actually flow through you. And, and it's not, no, I'm not talking about a, a, a being out there. I'm just talking about that connection with the universe that we'll have. And, and from uh, the one we detach when we go through our own emotions, which we'll go through. I mean, it is impossible. We're just, we're only humans and we, of course, have emotions, and and it could be emotions that uh, uh, are stronger in us than us. There's the story about I can't even recall who I heard it from. Uh, uh, a monk comes to a master. The, uh, uh, the master is crying, and the monk comes and says, uh, "Master, why are you crying?" And he says, "So oh, well, I, I was just informed that my mother passed away." And the uh, monk says. But you have said that everything is uh, 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 empty in you know, the attachment that you know we shouldn't be attached and you know attachments are empty and the master says yes but some attachments hurt more than others so we have our own emotions we have our own attachments we are impossible to get rid of you know our mother family friends so when the mind is actually flowing or the spirit is flowing through the mind we can actually see that's when we see that we're thinking outside, outside of the box that's, those are the moments when we get those aha moments and we're like looking at a problem but since you're not really perceiving the problem through your ego body mind you just find the solution and you're just like wow how did I come up with that and you can might look up, uh, look up something. It has happened to me. I've written things, and I just put them away, or do something. And I put it away, and then sometime later I find it and I read it, and I'm like, "Who wrote this?" <laughs> and and I'm actually going through it, and then Bundy pops up. Wow, I I wrote this. How did I come up with this? 
things that I don't even and I try to look, think and look back and what was I thinking? Where did this come from? And then just just like that, just like that, so many things that I, I come to realize. And I'm trying to put a thought, a body behind what I'm reading. And I realized that I have no idea. No idea. And, and like for instance, this morning I was, okay, what am I going to talk? I had this idea of the mind, is Buddha, Buddha is the mind. But I had no idea. And that's what happens, you know, when you are the mind, the spirit is flowing through the mind, you really don't have a sense of time. Therefore, trying to remember, trying to stamp a deed with, the, with a time stamp, it's just adding more, more, more uh, bits to your hard drive, to your memory. So uh, sometimes I, I it, it's even hard for me to remember. I, I'm sitting, I'm meditating, I'm things pop up in my mind, and I'm like, wow. That's a great solution for this problem. And then I just continue and then that great moment dissolves. I get up and what was I think? What was the great idea that I had? <laughs> no idea. So that that's that's exactly has been my, my uh, experience when we're thinking uh, through this period as compared to the mind. Therefore, when I was reading the bloodstream sermon, I'm like, wow, this is exactly what's stopping us from realizing that Buddha exists only in the mind. How we keep looking for it outside of ourselves. And we look at the statues and we think, oh, that's Buddha. No, that's, that's, that's just a tattoo, an image of the Buddha. And we keep doing that, we keep putting things, everything outside of ourselves. Like reality is something that is out there. That cushion is out there by itself. The cushion exists by itself. But it's my perception that's giving it. The being, the existence. So in that same sense, we, we keep putting, thinking about Buddha or Buddhahood. How, how am I going to touch Buddhahood if we're looking for it? But it's our own perception. Zen is just that. Zen is getting to know ourselves, getting to know our, those little uh, uh, mind tricks that we do to ourselves, which are the blind spots that, that keeps us doing the same things over and over. So realizing that Buddha is in the mind, the mind is the Buddha. That's, that's what gives it to you. There's no Buddha outside and that's exactly how it is. Buddha is usually in our perception out there something uh, of Shakyamuni Muni Buddha who lived tons of hundred years ago and that's the Buddha. But no, the Buddha is, is this mind. It's our own perception, it's our own mind, our own uh, understanding ourselves, of our mind, how we think, how we operate. That is, to me, that's the essence of Zen. It's, it's this perception, the study of your perception, to study yourself or your thoughts or your actions. And, and I was just reading and it was just like, wow. And I just had to put down the book. And it made a big impact on me. And then just start breathing deeply. And I picked out the book again. And I realized that I was having trouble remembering what I had just realized. <laughs>